Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. So today I'm making a video that I'm particularly excited about because it's about a book that I love so much and it's Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. It's called The Golden Compass in the US and it's the first in a trilogy called His Dark Materials. The first book was originally published in 1995, but I'm making this video now because I'm sure as many of you know, there's another book in this universe being published later this month on the 19th of October, which will be the first in another trilogy called The Book of Dust. This new trilogy, according to Pullman, is neither a sequel nor a prequel to the original one, but rather an equal. It's a companion trilogy that follows several of the same characters that you will see in the first trilogy, but also some new ones as well. I really just wanted an excuse to talk about why I love this book so much, and I'm going to speak in quite general terms about the plot and the themes, so that if you've not read it, you can absolutely still watch this video. I'm also planning on making videos about the two other books in this trilogy, and I understand that that's not going to be of interest to all of you, but I just love them so much that I thought I would do it anyway. You hear of so many books that are marketed as or reputed to be equally compelling for both children and adults, and most of the time I feel like that's not strictly true, there's usually a demographic that it's more aimed towards. But I think in the case of this book it is really successful both as a children's book and equally interesting for adult readers. This was my second favourite book series as a child, first being obviously Harry Potter. I read it when I was about 10 or 11 and I was quite an advanced reader but I really didn't find it too confusing or challenging even though reading it now I can see that there were clearly some themes and ideas that I couldn't possibly have understood at the time but it's so fast paced and fantastical and imaginative that you understand the plot as it's going along even if you don't understand all of the finer details. It engages with really mature and intellectual ideas, but it does it in a way that's never distracting to a child reader, but it adds a whole wealth of new meaning to an adult. It's written absolutely masterfully, it's got such an exciting plot, beautiful descriptions, and best of all are the characters, I think. The protagonist, Lyra, is just such a wonderful character, I think, because she's real. Lots of books with child protagonists, I think, make them into such perfect kids. They've got hidden talents or are of amazing intelligence. And Lyra's none of those things. She doesn't have any special skills. She isn't smarter than the average kid her age. Uh, she's, at least at the start of the novel, lives within her own head and is sometimes a bit of a compulsive liar. And she makes foolish mistakes and decisions. I think she's relatable for any kid reading the book because she doesn't always understand things immediately or come up with an ingenious plan to save everyone, but she's just normal and she deals with things in a way that you'd expect a girl her age to. The basic premise of the novel is a young girl called Lyra goes on an Arctic exploration mission to find her uncle Asriel, and she lives in Jordan College in Oxford and it's set in a world that is very similar to our own, but it has some key differences. The most noticeable difference is that every human has a kind of animal companion called a demon, which is an outward manifestation of their soul, and to whom they can converse and interact, and who protects them against danger. In a way similar to Patronus in Harry Potter, the shape that the demon takes kind of represents who they are as a person, and an adult's demon has a fixed shape, but a child's can change from animal to animal until they hit puberty when it's assumed that they know who they are as a person. There is such a strong physical and emotional link between the human and their demon, and it is so central to this novel and indeed the whole trilogy. And I know when I read it as a kid, I wanted desperately to have my own demon. I mean, it's a little animal companion that goes with you everywhere. What's not to love? I'm sure I understood what a demon stands for when I first read it, but reading it again now as an adult gives me so much more insight into how the book is trying to represent the soul. The novel is so dense with themes and ideas, and it discusses some of the most fundamental questions about the human condition and human nature, but it does so in a way that's always pertinent to the story, and it is very aware that it's a children's story, and it's adventure, really, it's fantastical, and never boring for a single second, constantly ploughing ahead with twists and turns around every corner. The novel's really interested in scientific ideas, especially particles and matter and what makes up the Northern Lights, which of course feature in the novel, but it's also really interested in world exploration, like Arctic missions and aeronautical expeditions. 
It's also about characters seeking knowledge for selfish reasons, uh, without regard to the consequences or the morality of what they're doing, using scientific and electrical experimentation that I found really reminiscent of Victor Frankenstein. The book Frankenstein is also about polar exploration in a way with the character of Captain Walton trying to be the first person to reach the North Pole. And it's a parallel that I'd never thought of before reading the book, but I thought it was really interesting this time around. Northern Lights might be about all these grand ideas, but it's also a really personal novel, and it's at its heart about Lyra and her struggles, especially her lack of parental figures growing up. She's brought up by scholars in Oxford, and they fail to give her any of a young girl's wants or needs, and although she's not an unhappy child, you can see that she lacks the love that a, a parent or a parental figure can give her. As the book progresses, we find out more about Lyra's parentage, and that throws up all sorts of problems as well, as she struggles to accept the truth and how her parentage affects her identity of herself. I think Lyra's personal experiences in this novel can be seen as allegorical of the much more universal themes that we see coming throughout, especially in her transition between childhood and adulthood, between innocence and experience that she begins to undergo throughout the course of this novel. It's this transition between innocence and experience, to reference William Blake, that is absolutely key to this novel. And it's brought up a lot in the idea of dust, with a capital D, which is a kind of elementary particle that doesn't affect children because they are still innocent. And I don't want to talk about dust anymore, to be honest, in this video, because it would become a bit too spoilery about the contents of the plot. But I'm sure I will talk about it in the next two videos that I'm going to make. But I think it is relevant to mention William Blake's Songs of Innocence and Experience here, which is a collection of poems about these two themes. Uh, really, it's kind of a rethinking of Milton's ideas of paradise and the fall, which of course he elaborates in Paradise Lost, which is itself extremely pertinent to this novel because the very title of the trilogy itself, His Dark Materials, is a quotation from Milton's Paradise Lost. If you've read Paradise Lost, you will absolutely see the parallels between that and this novel, and you can see where Pullman has really engaged with the ideas in Milton and in Blake as well, because supposedly he is a massive fan of William Blake's work. The novel is extremely biblical, and it deals with ideas of innocence and sin, and especially towards the end of the novel, it deals much more explicitly with the idea of original sin. I'm trying not to give too much away for those of you who haven't read it yet, but what I will say is that I think the essence of this book is about boundaries between innocence and experience, childhood and adulthood, human and inhuman, and worldly and unworldly. Over the last 20 years, this book has faced quite a bit of backlash uh, because of its attitudes towards religion and it's been banned and censored in some schools because uh, Pullman is an atheist and his criticism of the role of the church in society is very clear in this novel. The magisterium in this novel is a religious body that exerts a huge amount of control over society and it's really the cause of some of the greatest evil that occurs in the novel. I plan to talk more about the religious themes when I talk about the other two books because I think it's intrinsically linked to the plot so it's difficult not to give too much away. And also I think the ideas about religion kind of ferment and strengthen as the trilogy progresses. So that's all I'm going to talk about in this video. I know I could say so much more, but I want to keep this fairly generic and spoiler free. So if you do want to hear more about the trilogy, then do stay tuned because I will be posting two more videos, I think, about the other two books in the next two weeks. But don't worry, I will still be posting other content because I know not that many people will probably be interested in those videos. So if you've not subscribed to my channel and you want to see more, then please do so. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!